Okay. Wow, that does look like a studio, Mordecai. You weren't lying. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight you. Okay. Manishma Khabibi. What's up? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, we are we're so glad that you're here. And uh yeah, what are you singing now? Uh are you on mute? Well Oh, here I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. What's up, everybody? They're all muted. Oh, they're all muted. Okay. I was waiting for like a woo. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Here they come on. They're on. So we have people on Facebook. We have people on YouTube. We have people on uh, uh, on Zoom. And um, and they'll be able to watch us afterwards as well. So what are you doing today? What's what's on the agenda in studio? We are working, we are working on new a new song. Um, Ah, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. I mean, I know you have your fair share of, uh, of, of songs out there. So you know what it's like to be in a studio. It's just exhausting. I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> People don't realize how exhausting it is. It really no. is. It's just, it's endless. I mean, the, the vocals, the back vocals, do it again, do it again, do it again. You're just, ah, Are you, you a know? perfectionist? I am. I mean, we all think we're perfectionists, right? I mean, maybe not. Some people just are okay with with <laughs> medi mediocrity, okay. but yeah, I'm I'm nuts. I'm nuts about performance, pitch, um, everything, um, the production of the song. I'm very involved. Um, how many people are here? Well, I, I, you, I won't know until afterwards. But uh, the past three weeks, we ended up with over a thousand people watching all together. Wow, so, uh, you're on a lot of different groups now. First so. of all, it's been a while, Rabbi, since we've since we've connected. I mean, I we know. spoke this week, but but do you remember where we, we were last hanging yeah, out? Yeah, in Bordeaux, Bordeaux. You made me a nice video for Shabbat.com. That was uh, with fish. Oh, that's right. Trade. But even <laughs> before that, I think the first time we met was on that Shavuos program. That's right. That's years right. ago. Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> right, and you also sang for my organization, um, Afikim. And you're, I don't know if you remember. Oh, that's right. That's your organization. <laughs> yeah, I work. I work with Rabbi Butler. It's his organization. I work under him. But the, yeah, yeah, you were just getting started then. I mean, the, I don't know. You remember that? Of course, of course, I do. Oh I remember singing my my. I think my first album may have just come out, and I was singing these songs, and everyone's like, "What? What is he singing?" You know. Totally. I felt so, honestly. Can I just be honest? I really felt bad for you. <laughs> I really did because, like, you were like giving it one hundred and ten percent, and just a clientele, by the way, just an older clientele. Like, right. they, they, and the music is not even their thing. Like, they had right. a comedian like the year before, and, and I came out. I was ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and but, they were like, "Can you just can you just lower it?" Just Lower it a little. Take it down and not too loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but you 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 aced it. You did not let you didn't put your pedal off the metal the entire time. Right. So, you know it's uh, it's funny. With, with in the last year, I've been doing so many virtual events, and people the, the common question people always ask is like, how how do you how do you perform? How do you how do you have have any excitement when there's no audience there? And you just said I gave 110 percent there. I always I always give it my all, um, you know. And I tell people actually on the contrary, virtually there's the opportunity for 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 people to watch. You know, when you're in a theater, so you have a thousand seats, two thousand seats, five thousand seats was maybe the biggest show that I've done in the last few years. But when you're virtual, I mean the sky's the limit. You can have I mean some of these events, that solo event, or some of these events in the last year have just been hundreds of thousands of people watching so even though there's no crowd there i know that there's so many people watching and i just i'm just you know i feel them i feel i feel the energy even though i don't i don't see it well you, you know first of all the camera likes you so that's a good thing <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing i do you, do you even feel like there's a certain comfort zone just being in a camera like i i actually love sitting here giving classes and doing i just love it because I, I could, you know, grab a drink and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got your 
Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to drink. I, I would get make a chaim or something, but chaim. Okay, well, we'll have to do one in person on some uh, Patron Platinum or something. Yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, so can we can we ask some questions? Look, first of all, your history. We had your Achmiel on two weeks ago. And um, Yachmiel has been a dear friend for years. I took care of the choir a few times, and um, one of one of the um, one of the claims to fame is who went through the system. And um, so, of course, your name was really prominent. So, w- tell us about the journey from like a child star to this. Was there like an in between where you weren't singing, or were you always involved? So my story is I'm, I'm the youngest of seven. My father and mother both sing. My mother is an opera singer, trained oh, professional wow. opera singer. She's, I mean, you got to, whatever. You can't hear her, but she's, she's amazing. She, when she was like 20 and she was working with a coach and she was thinking of going, you know, pro, she ended up becoming religious and, you know, she didn't grow up. Uh, she grew up, I guess, modern Orthodox, maybe even a little less. Um, and then when she got a little bit more religious, she decided to get married and, 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 and have a family. My father was also a singer. Oh. Um, you know, he's about, he's a, he's a cantor about Tvila. He, back in the seventies, he used to perform a little bit. He, he, he toured with Karl Bach a little bit. Um, so you won the my... genetic DNA, you won the genetic lottery. Yes. So my <laughs> six siblings all sing. So. You can imagine the Shabbat dinner by us was just nonstop singing. I mean, from, from beginning till end, it was just harmonies and it was amazing. So when I, my, my older brothers were in a choir from Muncie, Slova Zemmer, which I'm sure, you know, and as the family, you know, as, as my siblings all got older and I was the youngest. So me and my brother, Duvi, who's two years older than I, um, we were always big fans of Miami Boys Choir. It was a huge choir at the time. And my mother said, why don't you try out? You know, when we were babies, she couldn't travel to Brooklyn with all, with all my other siblings, you know, running around the house. But when, when my siblings got older and it was just me and my brother, she said, I think we can, on Sundays we can go to Brooklyn now. So my brother and I tried out. I think I was seven when I tried out. Oh, wow. And Yerachmiel actually said, I don't know if he remembers the story, <laughs> but he said, I'm going to take Duvi. And Morty's a little young, so maybe maybe we should just maybe wait till he's eight or nine. You know, he's he's a little young. Um, and my mother said, "Listen, if I'm coming to Brooklyn, it's either both of them or none of them." So, job, <laughs> mama. That's my mama. So, <laughs> so Yachmiel said, "Okay." So he took me in. So I joined. I think when I was literally, you know, it was a few months till till the new group came in. I was just eight years old. I was a little pisher, and. I went through the system. I learned so much from Yachmiel. We traveled. Uh, we toured the country. We toured outside the country. Um, I, you know, I started off as just another kid in the choir. And then eventually I became a little bit more of a soloist. I gained a lot of experience on stage. Um, so I learned a lot. I mean, that was I, I, hours and hours in the studio. So the experience was was amazing. And then I my voice changed. I, I didn't sing, you know, I, I kind of quit when I was 14 and I was pretty much quiet until I was maybe 20. I mean, professionally, I wasn't really doing anything except for singing, you know, in the shower and by my piano or whatever, but my voice was, was changing. So when I was about 20, I started getting some voice lessons. I was living in Israel at the time. I made Aliyah with my wife and kids and so I'm Israeli now, so I, I can go into Israel actually, which is great. Nice. Um, and we were there for a few years. I was trying to sing, wasn't really working. My Hebrew wasn't great. It was, it was, it was a tough three years, although rewarding in many other ways. It was, you know, it was spiritually it was amazing, but financially and it was it was tough. So we moved back after a few years. I continued taking voice lessons, and when I got back. Um, I think I was like 24 when we moved back. 20, yeah, probably 24, 25. I started getting voice lessons again. I started doing, uh, I made, you know, first thing, got to make business cards because that makes you legit, you know? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what business card, vistaprint.com. Vistaprint. 
Mm. You know, if you put Vistaprint.com on the back, they give you a bigger discount. So, you know. But people know you use Vistaprint. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, my business cards, weddings, bar mitzvahs, Brit Milah, Shabbat Zmirot, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it, you know? So I start, I bought myself a keyboard. I barely had any money. I, I, when I moved back to Israel, I literally had nothing. Um, so uh, some friend hired me for like a, a Shabbos weekend. And, you know, I davened and, and they were very generous. They gave me like a thousand dollars, which at the time was, which was crazy. So I went straight to uh, Sam Ash. I said, I have a thousand dollars. I need a piano. I need some speakers, whatever you can give me. They're like a thousand dollars for all of that. So it's like, you can't really, I said, listen, this is all I got. So <laughs> give me, give me whatever you have. So they gave me some two speakers, some poles, a little keyboard. And then I was able to start, you know, um, I was able to start doing some bar mitzvahs and some engagement parties and some, some smaller events. And then, you know, one led to another and another. And then I was able to buy a little bit better equipment and a little bit of nicer keyboard. And, you know, did you learn um, to play piano or keyboard. So I took lessons when I was a little kid. I took lessons when I was also like seven or eight. And believe it or not, I hated it. I hated every week. It's like, oh, it's Tuesday night. Time for lessons. And I was like, oh, come on, mom, mom, you know, like any kid would do. And um, I really hated it. And my teacher after a year, you know, was with, well, she would check in with my mother, obviously, you know, every few weeks, every few months. He's not, he's not really progressing. He's not he's not practicing. If he doesn't practice, my mother, you know, whatever. We had a busy house. My mother couldn't force me to practice. So I was essentially just meeting with a, with a piano teacher once a week. And and I just I don't know. Maybe it was the fact that my, my piano teacher stunk like cigarettes. Like he came in and he absolutely stunk. And I was like, I just. The whole hour, I was like, oh, my God, I can't even, you know? <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, he was a nice, he was a nice fellow, but he stunk. So I, I, I after, after a year and a half or so, I just said, you know what, I'm going to quit. And then the funny thing was, right after that, I, I fell in love with my piano. I started playing by ear. And when I didn't have, like, the, you know, I didn't have the pressure <laughs> to be with a teacher... I just, I would come home from school and sit by the piano. I mean, I just sat and sat and now, you know, and, and I just learned how to play. I'm uh, actually sitting uh, by a piano now. Yeah, let's, so, hear, let's hear something. Rachmiel played on the Zoom. He began playing, uh, what did he play? I don't remember. Oh, um, Yalla Viavo, he played. Yeah. A little bit of a new song. A new song. Mm, can I give away? If there's a thousand people watching, I don't know if I can give away. Just the hook. I'm just, just want the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do, uh, what should I play? So this is Machar, one of my old songs. It's an interesting story. Machar was like the first song that I, that I really wrote that, that did anything. I, you know, as, as a singer, I guess it, it's like this in, in, in whatever any of you do, you know, there's things that you're good at and there's things that you're bad at. And it's important to find your your strengths. And it's also important to to separate your weaknesses and, and say, no, that's not for me. So when I put on my first album, I didn't think I can compose. I said, it's not really my thing. I'm working on my voice. Let me let the, my producers pick the songs. I, you know, I was involved. I like to be involved, but I didn't think composing was my, was my thing. Mm. I ended up writing this song you know, it goes, I don't know if the piano is coming through clearly. But yeah, yeah, we could hear it. It goes. So I wrote this song, put it on my first album, and it went nowhere. Like <laughs> nowhere. I was trying to push it. I tried to sing it. I'm like, I wrote this song. I'm so excited about, but it didn't really go anywhere. So that killed my confidence. Like that just, I didn't think I was a writer. Now I know I'm not a writer, you know? Ah, 
And then I don't remember, I guess my second album, I started working and I was looking for songs and I would still play because I still love to play. And I, I just had this moment of inspiration where this song, Machar, the hook came to me. So I wrote this hook nice. and I was like, this sounds kind of cool. But again, I didn't trust myself. Right. You know, I said, I can't write. So I showed it to my producer. I showed it to my wife and they're like, that's really cool. You know, it's like, it's, it's good, good vibes. So I ended up running with it. I ended up, uh, I wrote the rest of the song. <laughs> And then I ended up uh, producing that. And the song went, Baruch Hashem, it, it went really crazy. And that gave me like just a lot of a lot of confidence that, oh, maybe I can write. Maybe, maybe I just need to develop, maybe I just need to develop this, you know? Yeah. So I started sitting and writing more. And sometimes you just have moments where you sit down and it just comes to you like that. And other times you don't. And you have to just kind of keep playing till you until you find a good groove and a good a good hook um and since the then I, I actually wrote most of my most of my hit songs i wrote myself wow um i wrote um we can all sing we can all sing we can all sing biyachad, yachad. we're creating biyachad. it's a special Harmony. So I wrote that, and thank God, I just I ran with that. Crazy stuff. Can I ask you how how is your Hebrew so good that you could compose songs in Hebrew? I, so, I'm sorry to ask that, but it's like I'm really no, impressed. So first of all, a lot of my um, I mean that's another that's a, it's another challenge that I'm, I'm trying to work through. So first of all, I, I made Aliyah, right? My wife and I got married and we said, we want to live in Israel. Nothing else matters. I, I didn't really have a plan. I don't want to say I, you know, I don't want to say I regret it because, you know, God, God planned, planned that for us. But I feel like maybe if I would have set myself up a little bit with, with some sort of profession and, and maybe it would have worked out differently, but whatever, this was, this was God's plan. So we moved, we got married, we moved, with our first baby, we got to Israel. We were expecting our second. Things were hectic. Um, and I needed a job. I didn't go to learn. I, I needed to support my family. So I was I was working. I knew somebody, my brother-in-law had a had a connection. There was a school in Katamon, for those of you who know, you know, Jerusalem a little bit. There was a school for children with uh, with autism. And I worked at Hask, so I said, you know, I, I, I have an appreciation for that. I, I mean, I love I love working with kids. Um, so I, I I started working there. I was an assistant. I didn't, you know, I didn't really have a, like a master's in teaching. I had a bachelor's and I went to college, but I didn't really have a master's in teaching. So I was an assistant teacher uh, for two years and I took as many hours as they would give me because I needed the money. So I, I opened the place up at 7 a.m. and I was there till wow. about 5 p.m. And it was all Israeli. I mean, the kids were Israeli. So wow. I had no choice. I mean, I was lucky enough to get the job. And then I worked with Israeli teachers and the administration. I mean, there were some Americans that, that helped me through the ropes. But that's where I that's where I picked up a lot of my Hebrew. I'm still not, you know, I'm still not fluent, fluent, but I could sing and I, and I, I have a decent uh uh, I have a decent Hebrew. Um, it's very impressive. It really is. Thank you. <laughs> because on that, that's the that's actually what we talked about before you came on is that that wave of people pouring their heart out to Hashem in Hebrew in the same way we used to do it only in English, and it's not secular. It's like a Jewish, hashkafically powerful song, but it's not from a pasuk and not from the sitter. It just 
and it's the fact that you could do it as an American, now you're an Israeli, uh, it's just, uh, it's really special. Yeah, 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 thank God. Uh, can, you, can you take a few questions? Absolutely. Okay, so um, uh, we have someone here named Tirz, I'll put her on. She is a, a, a musician, a composer, she's performed in concert, and she's learning more about her Judaism. And, um, and I'm gonna put her on, uh, and she's from Brazil, but she's in New York now. Okay, there you go. Hi. What's up, Tirza? Hi, it's so nice to uh, see you. I remember like um, a few years ago, maybe not, not too long ago, your fir the first song that I heard by uh, you was Booker Tov. Booker Tov, hello. <laughs> yeah, it was like my hit up song many mornings when I didn't want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a really fun song. Yeah. Ooh, it's really awesome. oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah. And I see that I, I probably read it somewhere, but you had a vocal teacher, like a, a voice teacher. In, in like, as for us, um, like, performing artists like you know that we try to sing and compose songs for the Yiddish guide would you say it's important for us to have um voice teachers to develop our voices and to help us out throughout the way it's like it's a do you think it's a very necessary investment would you say absolutely absolutely um voice teachers for so many reasons obviously you know, in any profession, obviously any athlete always have coaches, um, any profession really, you, you know, it's always important to have a mentor. Um, you know, even if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, you know, have somebody to look up to somebody who can just show you <clears throat> what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. But so much more than that, it's, it's showing your, it's taking yourself seriously. You know, it's not just like I'm a singer, it's I'm, I'm spending money I'm trapped for me. It was actually, I was traveling to the first, my teacher, one of my teachers was in Brooklyn and it was such a pain. To, it wasn't just an hour of the voice lesson. It was driving there in traffic and it was the hour there and, and it was the hour and a half back in traffic. It was like half my day, if not more. And it was that time and that money that I was investing in me and my, in my career that made me take myself seriously. Aside from obviously all the, I mean, I can tell you myself, when I started, <clears throat> when I started singing and I told you I was playing keyboard and then I, I, <coughs> I to the wedding market, I started singing at one wedding and then I put out an album and things got, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> when I started doing weddings, I would, I would, I would leave after the wedding like this. I, gotta, I, would, start, I would talk like this. Oh, no. I would wake up the next morning and I was like this. And I, and I would have a wedding the next night and I would wake up and I would, you know, tap my wife and be like, Honey, uh, I got nothing. I had nothing. So you can imagine it was very stressful. So, you know, I would just run and I would take an hour shower with the steam and I would do honey and I would do, you know, hot tea and honey all day. And occasionally I would take some steroids, which is a great, great little trick for all of you that have been yeah, in it's not you know, a long term uh, yeah yeah it's definitely not a healthy long term plan but you know for the even today i i rarely take them because thank god my voice well let me just finish so when i started taking voice lessons i would see i would do a wedding and i would feel i mean i, I felt great i would wake up the next morning i would do another wedding and i, I was doing four weddings a week five weddings a week and obviously I was exhausted, you know, it's tiring. And, but I was, I was vocally there. I was vocally strong. Um, and it was only because of the voice lessons. I mean, only there's, there's, and I took it seriously. I didn't just commit to the hour and the drive there and, and the money and the money that I didn't have at the time, but I practiced every day. I did the exercises every day. He told me a half hour in the morning, a half hour at night. And, Sorry about that. We just got a call. Um, so I was very serious about the about the practices, and it's it's very important. Voice lessons are very very important. 
Okay. And like you said, to avoid injuries and to have a long lasting voice and amazing. absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Of course. Nice to meet you. A moment for a, a little bit more, a little bit more. Absolutely. Yep. So first of all, you have over here a number of musicians. Do you remember Moshe? Yes. From the old days. And Zadie made us laugh. Sure. So his son is a singer named Tali. Tali, yes. And Tali's on. Well, uh, Spotlight Tali from on. He's, he's an upcoming singer. So we'll, hey, Tali. We're all, we're all, we're all big fans over here. Thank you. <laughs> it's Tali. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we have a question. We have another musician named Yankee Flossberg. So, Yankee, uh, it's all yours. He just recovered from very life threatening COVID. He was incredibly sick. We were davening for him. So we're, we're very grateful that Yankee is actually on. Um, How are you? What's up, Yankee? How are you? Yankee's my buddy. I mean, I haven't seen you in a while, but Yankee and I uh, have certainly met. We've, uh, we've, we've, we've chilled. And um, Yankee, what's yeah, my up? Son, my son is a huge fan, as you know. <laughs> um, I wanted to know, how, how do you manage, you know, especially being a singer and also Mormon bands that have this problem. How do you struggle being out all night, every night with family and coming home to the kids and, and the wife? It's a great question. Great question. So the answer is it's every, every, every professional really has their own way of, of, of having this challenge, family, work, family, work, you know, uh, some people, um, you know, people have some friends in investment banking that that see their families less than I do. You know, um, it's just about having good boundaries. Uh, you meaning, you know, setting yourself up for for participating in in, in being with the family. Um, it's not easy. I can tell you, it's not easy. Um, although I don't, I'm not out every night these days, um, well, especially because of COVID, yeah. but. But in general, I mean, my kids are in school during the day and they get home and I'm, I'm like, bye guys, you know, I'm out to a wedding, sitting in traffic and I got to head out to a, to, a, to a gig and it's not easy. So Shabbos becomes crucial, critical, yeah. critical time that I, you know, even if I'm tired, I need to be, I need to be laser focused. I need to make the, the Shabbos table uh, exciting and fun for my kids um and obviously any night that i'm not uh that i'm not working i try to to put my phone down although, although it's not easy we're all i shouldn't speak for everybody right we all have uh phone addiction issues and now i have five kids thank god i just had my fifth kid a few weeks ago mouth to mouth. thank you and i try to put my phone away and I try to do homework. I study for tests with my kids. Um, I try to, you know, since I'm home during the day, I, I get uh, lunch often with my wife or breakfast because I, I have, you know, I work for myself. So during the day, I, I, I run my, my management, whatever, phone calls, emails, contracts, um, studio. But when I'm home, I, I often, you know, get to go out with my wife. So you got to, you have to be creative, um, especially with, with weird hours. Um, you know, Chagim and Yantif and holidays, when people are with their families, I'm often not. I'm often working. Um, so again, it's it's not easy, but I did I did want this, so I try not to complain. My wife supports me. She always knew that I wanted this so badly. Um, I really wanted I really wanted this. I love to sing. I love music. I love, you know, trying to inspire and influence through music. So now that I was given this platform, I try to just make the best of it, try to make the best of my family time. And I try not to complain. Uh, you know, people say, you know, even when you get to go out with your wife, and I know this is going to sound really arrogant, but I'm just, you know, people come to my table all the time, whatever. It's, 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 it's part, part of the, it's part of the gig. People come to my table and sometimes, sometimes it's a lot, you know, and people say it must be so annoying, you know? So I say, first of all, it's not annoying because if people didn't come up to my table, I'd be like, yo, where are my fans? You know, <laughs> if I go to the supermarket on Thursday night and nobody says hello to me, 
I'll be depressed. Okay. <laughs> no joking, but in all seriousness, um, it's part of, it's, it's just part of the job and this is what I wanted. And I don't, I, I, like I said, I try not to complain. I try to, I embrace it. My wife understands and I try to just make the best of the bounds. Thank you. Beautiful. Such an amazing answer. Um, there are two questions people don't want to ask, but they're right in. One question is, is there a friendly competition between you and Duvi? <laughs> is there a friendly competition? <laughs> Is that a um, question to ask? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a totally fair question. Um, not really. Um, I mean, it's funny because I'm younger. I'm younger than Duvi is, and Duvi still lives in Israel, and he's like my best, best, best friend. Um, not just my brother, <clears throat> but we are super close. So I've been trying to help him, um, you know, with in any way that I can. You know, obviously he wants to try to be his own, which is which is great because, you know, we shouldn't be the same product and the same kind of thing, but I try to help him in whatever way that I can composition production. Um, I've, I've been with him in the studio, coaching him vocally. Wow. Um, yeah, I try, I, 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 there's, there's not really any uh, competition. Um, we're rooting for each other and thank God it's, uh, it's good vibes. Amazing. Amazing. And someone else wants to know, your songs are so varied in genre. Do you take any inspiration from not Jewish music? Good question. So the answer is yes, I do. So I grew up modern Orthodox. I grew up, I went to a co-ed school, co-ed day school, a modern Orthodox high school. Um, I grew up, although I was in Miami Boys Choir, most of what I listened to was secular music, believe it or not. Um, and I think people can probably gather this from, from <clears throat> the way that I sing and, you know, some of my runs and my style and my, you know, because it's hard to just have that. I really grew up on that. I grew up on, on a really a, a wide span of, of from Frank Sinatra, which I don't really sing like that, but I learned a lot you from could. the way, <laughs> well, from, <laughs> I, from the way that from the way that Frank Sinatra delivers his messages, the way that he chews on every word and like every every word that he says, you know that he means it. So I learned a lot from him. And then Michael Jackson and Pop, and then Michael Bublé, who's a little bit more like, you know. And then you know boy bands. I mean Backstreet Boys. I grew up on In Sync, on Justin Timberlake, on Justin Bieber was a little bit later. He's like more contempt. You know, he's more like. He's a few years younger than I, so I didn't grow up on that. But, but I have a lot of influence from secular music, um, and that's and 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 like I said, I, I I love big bands. I love pop. I love country. I love, you know, um, I love. I, I really love a, a lot of different uh, genres, and that's why I I have you know a bunch of different genres on my albums. Wow. You know, there's no such thing as tray for music. It's just music waiting to to be infused with Ruchnius. And uh, I think you inspire a lot of people. And the coolest thing is, and I I, I just, I got to say this, this man does not need auto-tune. I heard him <laughs> live a number of times. I, 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 was, I was explaining in the first half an hour why there are so many new Jewish singers today. And we explain all the factors, uh, bigger Jewish population, uh, it, much easier to produce. You don't need analog tracks. Uh, there's YouTube to get your stuff out there. And, and every day, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty, I'm one of them. I'm an old man, but I put out, I put out a video almost every week and it, it gets really nice play in Israel. And, uh, but I'm a nobody, you know, like, but it's so easy to do because that's today's world. Um, so a, a person like you to actually garner millions of views, uh, it, you sort of are separating yourself from the pack in the most amazing way. And the fact that you don't need auto-tune, guys like me need auto-tune. Like I'm not gonna, I would, I would never try to sing without auto-tune. Even if people say, you sound okay. I said, no, I have a much better ear than voice. That was so pitchy and like, <laughs> oh, and the microphone, the studio microphone is unforgiving. So, right. I saw, I, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. I think that 
you're right. Uh, you know, part of part of what I try to deliver at live events and some of the greatest compliments that I've gotten was that it's, it, it sounds like you're just playing your album. You know, Halavai, we, we Jewish singers don't really do the lip syncing thing. I mean, unless some guys do, I've never done it. Even though my mother always tells me, why don't you just lip sync? You're killing your voice. You know, you work every night of Pesach, just, just play the album and dance. Nobody will know you're so cute anyways. I'm like, mom, I, 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 <laughs> I just can't. So that's the greatest compliment when people say that, you know, your live performance sounds like, like the track itself. Um, you know, pitch, I, I'm still not sure if pitch is something that you can perfect. I, I guess you know, with voice training, can you perfect pitch? Maybe my voice teachers, some of them did say that as you strengthen your muscles and your technique, it will help with your pitch. It will. But I think a lot of it is just, you know, what, what you're born with. Um, you know, can somebody who's tone deaf go get voice lessons and become a singer? I, I don't think so. But somebody who's a pretty good singer and gets voice lessons will probably improve their pitch. Right. But, but almost every singer needs auto. I mean, it's just, it's so unforgiving. And, and you know, I, I, you know I'm just, uh, I, I don't want to gush over here, but I do want to tell you, I, I, you know, I, I'm an old man. I, I, I remember when Avram Fried came out with his first album, like, and be like, and I was very, I've been involved in music uh, with Mandy Walt and Shlami. They, these were my chevra. And I was a little bit jaded when another guy, Shapiro is such a common last name. And, you know, Mordechai, actually my new son-in-law is getting married to my daughter's name is Mordechai. So Mordechai is a, a, a nice name. Um, but when I heard you with that sing-off versus Benny Friedman, I said, oh my goodness, he's actually really, really freaking good. <laughs> wow. I, I, and if you haven't seen it, you should go to YouTube and look at it because it'll give you an appreciation that it's not just about a nice niggin, but there's a craft going on here. And uh, and really, I think you're, you're literally one of the best out there. I produce Penny's album, you know. Uh, sure. album, and he has a, a stunning voice as well. I'm sure you're, you're friends with him. But what you what you did with that rock holler with that with that rock do you remember that? <laughs> just great great stuff. Thank well, you. Yeah, the um, I forgot what I was gonna say, but the um, yeah. So oh, that's what I was gonna say. The 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 pitch thing is, and I'm sure you probably touched touched upon this, but as more people are using pitch, so we all kind of have to do it, you know, back in the, in obviously in the fifties and sixties and seventies, I'm not even sure when auto tune probably started in the nineties, maybe not quite sure about that, but when nobody was, was first of all, when nobody was, was tuned, when nobody was using Melodyne in the pitching. Right. So it really did sift out the bad singers. Um, you could, you couldn't fake it, you know? Um, but as more and people, more and more people started using it, so even good singer, I mean, I, you, I, I tune, we all, we all tune. Um, you need to, you know, you really do. You're, you're, but you, your tune is minimal. Like you cannot hear your tune. And it's, but could you imagine how sad it would be if Kalbach used auto tune? <laughs> was so his pitchiness was his charm. Exactly. It's just like, Right, even AB Rock. I mean, AB's got a beautiful voice, but he, if if you auto tune all of it, it would be mechanical, and that would be, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, AB called me the other day. I was, I was literally like, I was fangirling. I was like, I was like, honey, it's AB Rottenberg. He's calling me. Yes. I don't know if you. Got, I'm sure. I don't know if you guys know AB Rottenberg. He's like prolific composer, one of the oldest, um, and he's just amazing. I mean, if you haven't heard his stuff, you should. Check it out, YouTube or uh, wherever you stream music. He has the most amazing song. Whenever I need a good cry, when I'm driving and I need a good cry, just turn on, you know, Torah Scrolls or. We danced round and round in circles as if the world had done no wrong. From evening until morning, filling up the shoe with the song. Yeah, he's got the most. Uh, so. Yeah, it was pretty he, awesome to get a phone call from him. Wow. Did he, uh, did he want to be on your next album or you should be on his? It's top um, secret, but 
Good things coming. He's, Good. he's coming out with an album now. You're asking or you? No, no, I'm telling you. I mean, he announced it on, on my Zoom. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, that, that is, he, he said every eight years, that's his with, pattern. With three Holocaust songs, he said. With, with three Holocaust songs, right. Eight years, wow. I wish I could come out with an album only every eight years and still be as amazing as A.B. Rottenberg. <laughs> aye, aye. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, p- part, of the, part of the YouTube phenomena um, with some exceptions, you may you, you may be one of them. Is there's so much music coming out now that it's it's sort of like um, a a movie that comes out that, that that the second week of the box office, it's got half the viewership, and the, by the third week, because there's just new songs that that replace it so quickly. So the singers don't have that luxury of coming out with stuff every eight years because you will be forgotten. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you have to find the right balance between staying current and not oversaturating because, you know, you got to, the song, the song needs love, it needs, it needs spotlight. It needs its own, it needs its own spot for, I guess everybody has their own level of what, of what that amount of time is. You know, I'm, I, I'm feeling desperate to put out new material, but I've just, just had a baby and I was really hoping to put out a song for Purim. But I guess God had other plans for me. I'm, I was here trying to finish it up to see if I can get it out for Perm, but it's uh, Perm's tomorrow, so <laughs> that's it's just not happening, you know. Um, and then of course we have Pesach around the corner, so there's always that, and it's not so simple for for us Jewish singers, you know. We always have to plan in advance, you know. I I can't put out a new music video a week before Pesach, and then people won't. Well, so Pesach. you have the week before Pesach, you have Cholamoid, and then people won't listen to it because of Svira. So I have to wait now till probably Lagba Omer. So it's it's a it's a little frustrating, but it's uh, it's in his hands. I'm they doing the best forget. I can. They won't forget. By the way, you got a response to your que- to the question about non-Jewish music. The the young lady wrote back. Thank you for your answer. I totally hear all the genres, which is great. I can listen to your music. I know it's kosher, but still jam like I did in the 90s. Hello, boys to men and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. I, I, I appreciate that because as I started in the in the industry and I started to, some would say I, I, I stretched the cord of what was considered appropriate Jewish music. And like you said, Rabbi, I, I feel that anything that's, that has soul and, and Jewish messages and vibes. So the production sounds like 2021, that should be a problem. I, I don't think so, but I did get some slack. I still get, truth is, I still get some, I mean, I, I still get a little bit of, of slack. You know, people from, I don't want to, whatever, I don't want to shout, call out any communities, but there are certain communities where they'll say, oh, you know, it's a little... A little goyish, a little goyish sounding for what I want my kids to to grow up on. But I, I tell people that a lot of Jewish music that you heard, first of all, Shlomo Kaubach or, or Yossi Green, a lot of these guys were also copying the vibes of the 70s and 80s where there was folk music and and the 90s. I mean, it was, was more like rock music. I mean, people think there's like Jewish music and secular music. I, I don't really see it that way. I just see anything that has Jewish words or Jewish message uh, that that's inspiring. Doesn't matter how contemporary it sounds, you know, it's it's Jewish and it's. Um, I think that's the, what the numbers speak for themselves. Um, someone just wrote, "It's so nice that Mordechai should be on live. His spark and joy and honesty is amazing." The song Chizku from his first album is still one of my favorites. Got me through hard times and all of his fun songs keep me going. Thank you so much. What a treat to have him on live. And- I love getting feedback about that song, Chizku, because I love it too. And I regret so much not putting out a music video for that song. I had big plans. Chizku, you know, it, it's always hard, you know, especially back then. Now now that I'm three albums in, it's, it's a little bit easier to like kind of pick, okay, you know, Hakol Mishumayim, I think, is going to be a hit. I'm going to push it. I'm going to put my money into a video for that. My first album, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I had this song, Schar Mitzvah, which was, I didn't even want to buy it. I thought it was so weird. You know, the original demo, I, 
uh, if I ever see you, uh, Rabbi, I'll, I'll play it for you. The original demo was like so weird. And I was like, I'm not, you know, it was like. And I was like, what is so slow? He can't dance to it. It's not a ballad. It's not a fast song. It, like, what is it? You know? And then my, one of my producers convinced me to take it. So I did. And then the arrangement came back and I was like, oh my gosh, the song is really cool. Um, and then Call of Dark, I put a music video out too. And then Chizku, I wanted to put a music video out too. But by the time I was going to get around to it, I was already on my second album. Um, and But the song is great. The message, I, I loved it. Um, and I feel like if I would have maybe put out a music video, maybe it would have given a little bit more more light to the song, but yeah, it was a, wow. I really love that song. So thank you for that. Absolutely. One person wants to know is one in a million an original one in a million, one in a million actually was played for me by a guy named Mordechai Brizel. He's um, he's a fairly known name in the business. He composes. He called me up and said, I have this song for you. I went over to his house, played it for me. And I was like, wow. Wow. So he, he, he happens to be he doesn't really play and he doesn't really uh, he doesn't really he's not super musical, but he, he knows how to write a hook. And so I, I kind of built it with him. I did co-compose it with him, even though the lyrics were him. And the concept was him. It was basically all him. But I, I came up with the chords and, and the vibe, you know. Um, you know, the way that we... In a million, in a million, one in a million. You know, the vibe and, and the, the arrangement style. Obviously, I work with... I'm here now with some of my producers, Daniel Kapler, Jan Freider, who I'm sure you've heard of, who have like been a huge part of my my success they they arranged that song um the reason i i asked it's just it's so perfect and i know all of your music is perfect thank god everything you release i think is perfect but that one in a million i don't i don't listen to secular music anymore it's all jewish for me so when someone comes out with something i don't know that it's a you know it's a copy it's a not a parody or a, an adaptation so yes to go off on everything and I left you some comments for the rabbi to tell you how I love your sense of humor. I love when you I love when you were in Costco after waiting an hour and you said I'm buying everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I was just sharing that with a friend of mine who is a, a big fan of yours now. So I was just sharing and how you're terrific in the kitchen, how helpful you are. I think is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so, good to see you. Thank you so much. It's a real treat. It's a real thank treat. You. Thank you for doing this with the rabbi. Thank you. You know Judy, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Judy is of like, <laughs> she's one of my big fans, and I'm a big fan of her. She's like a huge, Thank you. She, she pushes Jewish music, and her passion for Jewish music is really, it's truly, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's just. You're, you're, thank you so much. Your friend Benny really uh, gave me a lot of props. So he's given me the encouragement to do what I do. He said he appreciated my enthusiasm. So, uh, that keeps me going. <laughs> um, yeah, keep it up. Keep it as up. you're saying, as you're saying, I can't drop the phone. I'm up until four, four thirty in the morning, and then I can't wake up for my own show. <laughs> so I, so I just too busy trying to share music all the time. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you so for... much for everything that you give to us because you're amazing. Your energy. I'm just going to give you a bracha that Hashem should keep you safe. Please, God, in all your travels. Because I always amazing. worry about you being tired. Like somebody asked, how do you do it all? So uh, just stay safe, please, God. Amen. Thank you. And healthy, because I don't know how people are doing it at these weddings. I have no idea how everyone's dancing with no masks on. And I just pray for everyone to stay safe and healthy. Amen. 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 I, I'm, just, I, I'm just assuming that, that most of them had COVID already. Yeah. That's, we have to hope somehow everybody is already healthy and safe. And <laughs> yes. had vaccines, right? <laughs> yeah. Or they had it. I mean, I, or I they had it. Yeah. A long time ago. Thank God I still have antibodies. I didn't get the vaccine yet, but we'll see. We'll see what happens I'm there. Glad you survived the Baruch Hashem. Glad yes. Thank, thank, thank God. Your Shalema should uh, should get better, and 
I hope that uh, we can have these meetings in person soon. Amen, amen. One last question for you. Uh, where did you get that sweater? I look all <laughs> over for sweaters like that. The zipper. You know, yeah. First, I love that question. <laughs> Second of all, where I got it from is even better. Okay. LaGuardia Airport is the worst, the worst airport, like in the world. I try not to fly out of there. Awful. Yeah. Um, it is just such it's a train wreck every time. Just the Ubers and the it's terrible. I fly try to fly to JFK. I'm very close. Recently, LaGuardia is trying to revamp. And the first time that I was there, they have this whole beautiful. Sorry, that was my kids calling. And they're probably gonna call another hundred times till I answer, uh, because kids are great. Um so I was in LaGuardia in this new beautiful section and I saw this store and I was like this is great LaGuardia airport picking up their game so I went into the store and they really had beautiful stuff and I was like I I need that sweater <laughs> so it was uh I think it's Hugo Boss and I saw it and I was like it's perfect and of course I you know I'm always like I, I try to fit into the small but I'm really not a small I'm really a medium sometimes you know it depends on the brand sometimes I'm a large but I was like, I put the small on and I was like talking to the guy. My flight was in like 20 minutes, of course. And I'm like, can I pull off the small? He's like, I think you can. I mean, it's pulling a little bit, you know? And I was like, so I should go medium. He's like, I think so. I was like, but I really want the small, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so in the end, I got the medium and it fits well. And, <laughs> and it's got pockets. Oh my it's God. It's got pockets, yes. Oh, that's a dream sweater. And it's got this nice little detail over here. The, the women, I, I don't think you appreciate the quest for the perfect sweater that men have. <laughs> I could daven in it. It's like a jacket. I don't need it. I could take pictures in it. I can give it all my life. I'm looking for that sweater. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So true. So true. Ay, ay, ay. Mordechai, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello. I'm just swiping to see who's here. Mordechai, I just got one more question, if you can. Sure. My wife would like to know how long does it take you to leave when you pick up your son from yeshiva? How long does it take you to leave without those kids around you? Well, now because of COVID, so everyone pretty much, you know, stay, well, well, my son actually is old enough that he's, um, he's on a bus now, but my daughter who's three, I have to pick her up. And I think it's, it's already gotten old. It's not that cool to see Morty Shapiro anymore. Cause I'm there, you know, I'm there every day. Not uh, that cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, Always cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, especially because of COVID, everyone's kind of keeping their distance. So, um, you know, it's all right. I'm, 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 I'm in and out. Nice. Okay, You're well. amazing that you, uh, thank God are such a helpful dad and God bless your wife to stay, uh, strong and energetic to take care of everyone when you're, uh, when you're away. Um, yeah. My wife, um, I, I, I'm so blessed that I see it more and more, the more that we have, you know, we just had our fifth kid, as I told you. And, um, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night just to, just to turn over. She's always awake. My wife is always awake feeding or burping. You know, I wake up to like, I, I feel, I hear the burping and I'm like, honey, I love you. Good job. <laughs> Give her a nice little right. thumbs up. <laughs> right. And then go back to sleep. Wow. But uh, yeah, Yiddish mamas are amazing, especially my wife. Keep the pancakes okay. coming. <laughs> okay. Well, to all of our watchers on Facebook, to all of our watchers on YouTube Live, all of our watchers on Zoom, uh, we first of all, we thank Morty. I can't believe after a whole day in the studio, you wouldn't believe I'm about to go to studio, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, right. wow. It's the end of the day. Actually, studio yeah. comes to me, but whatever. Still got to sing. Um, but yeah, thank you for giving us your, your, your ruach. It's a perfect perm coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Afrelich and Purim. I'm excited. I'm excited. Purim's not going to be exactly the same because of COVID, but uh, but just because of COVID, don't let it, uh, don't let the, the day escape you. Embrace it. Feel the joy. And um, Mr. Shem, we, these masks should be, and COVID should be done with really soon. Amen. And, um, and everybody should be healthy. And this was, this was awesome. This was a great way to talk after a day 
studio. Exactly what I needed. So thank you, Rabbi. Fantastic. Take care. Thank God you. God bless you. Safe Fair travels so home. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Are you in Jan Freider's studio or someone else right now? I am. Yes. So I do have. So you trip. have a trip. <laughs> yes. I've, I've been there. I, I was able to visit Ethan Freyla there. So uh, stay uh, safe. I do have Good a Good luck trip. to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Good night, everybody. God Happy bless birthday. you. Continue success.